can make our Linux file server, we'll create some users, a group, and something to share. To create the users and group, we'll use the uh, system tool. Go under security and users, user and group management. Add. I'm going to click Disable User Login. These users are only going to be accessing shares and not logging into the system. Now that I've created our third user, we'll create a group, clicking the Groups tab and Add. I'll call this group DNet220. We'll add our three new users, Andrew, Linus, and Richard. Next, we'll want to change permissions on the parent folders of the folder that we want to share. To do this, we want to become root. The parent folder is DNet220 off of the root. Setting right there. Right now, if we were to take a look at that folder, we would see the DNet220 is root root and it has no access to anyone but the owner. We need to change that or we won't be able to access the subfolder that we want. So we're going to uh, change mod and we're going to need to change that to 7 Okay, and then for the actual um, directory that we want to share, which is public folder under DNet220 files, um, we'll also want to change ownership and we'll change the owner. We'll leave the owner as root, but change the uh, group as DNet220. Okay, and we'll also want to change mod that to actually give us full access in this case. Um, so we'll do a, a 7 7. Uh, which will give full access to the owner and to the group 220. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and go into Yast and start our Samba server. Go to Network Services, Samba server. We'll eventually go back to the command line where we'll have to make our Samba users. You can change this to be your domain or you can leave it as is. It should match whatever you have on your client workstations. This wizard will set up the necessary config files. We're going to have to edit one of those files from the command line in a moment. It's not a domain controller, we're just setting up a simple file server and we want this to start during boot. Okay, great. Now that we've set that up, we have a file that we can uh, manipulate. We'll go to the command line. Down here at the command line, we want to be root again. And we're going to set up all of those three users that we just made. Be sure to use the same usernames and passwords exactly that you used when you set them up in Unix. Okay, now that we have added our three Samba users, we need to edit the Samba configuration file so it will work correctly with a Windows 7 client. By default, Samba still works with Windows XP clients and not Windows 7. So we'll want to go into our favorite editor and edit the Samba comp file. What we're going to want to do to that file is 
come down and insert. line. Okay, we're done at the command line. Now we'll go back into Samba in Yast and we'll configure the share. Let's go to our network services, Samba server. Okay, it's time to add a share. Share name, we'll just call it public. And then we have to provide the path. Like that. Okay, and then we'll want to come in and edit our share. Stuff to share. There we go. We'll choose edit. And we want to add some parameters. We want to add a valid users parameter down here at the bottom. And we want to list the users that are allowed in the share. Which let's make Richard and Linus. They'll be allowed. We're not going to allow Andrew. He'll have no access. And then we'll choose Richard as having full right access. So we'll give him the right list. On the right list will be Richard. So he'll be able to read and write. And then for Linus, we'll give him just read only access and he'll go on the read list. Okay, that'll take care of it. Now let's check it out from the Windows 7 client. In Windows 7, there are several ways to map a share. We'll go to Computer and choose Map a Network Drive. You can use the URL or the IP and then the share name. We'll choose connect using different credentials so that we can use the credentials of our new users. Richard should have full read write access to the share. Share opens and we'll just go ahead and create a new folder to verify that. So there's a new folder. And we'll go ahead and disconnect. We're going to reconnect our share as a different user. This time, let's be Linus. Okay, let's try to make something. And you can see we have no permission. But we can access what Richard has made. Perfect read-only access. We'll disconnect and we'll connect one last time as our third user. And that's Andrew. Whoops. And now I'll just be in a circular loop because it says access is denied. So we're not going to get in as Andrew, which is exactly what we wanted. So that concludes this tutorial.